16 gigabytes of RAM in 2023 is considered to be the sweet spot for gaming PCs. But around 20% of gamers currently have 8 gigabytes of RAM in their gaming PCs, according to the Steam hardware survey. And this begs the question, is the upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM worth it in 2023? But before I get into this video, let me know, how much RAM do you have in your gaming PC? Comment down below. Today I've decided to test using my upgraded £65 gaming PC. It has an i7-3770 and it runs on a DDR3 platform because third gen is DDR3, yeah. And I feel like it's a good representation of a system that someone with 8GB of RAM would be using it in 2023. And with DDR3 being so cheap in the UK for around £10 for 8GB of 1600MHz, it could make for a very cheap and easy upgrade for an older system like this. But if you want to see me test on a more modern system with more modern games, let me know in the comments down below because I do have a Ryzen 5 5600G test benching system and this could be more accurate for more modern systems. So why is 16GB of RAM better? Essentially, there is more temporary storage that the CPU can quickly access rather than having to access it from the disk. And this in turn improves gaming performance and frame rate stability, which is always good because I know as PC gamers, we're always chasing them frame rates. And with operating systems and games becoming a lot more demanding in 2023, this has pretty much made 16 gigabytes of RAM the go-to memory. And 16 gigabytes of RAM is not only better for raw gaming performance, it's also better for productivity tasks and multitasking. So say if you want to play some games, but you can't be bothered to close Chrome every time you start up a game, 16 gigabytes of RAM is a very good option here. Also, if you want to watch YouTube in the background as well, because we do know that Chrome is a bit of a memory hog, 16 gigabytes of RAM is perfectly good for this as well. And over time, as your operating system gets a bit older and you install more programs, it becomes more memory intensive as more programs are loaded. Here, 8 gigabytes of RAM may struggle, but 16 gigabytes of RAM would be totally fine. All testing today is done at 1080p on my upgraded 65 pound gaming PC, which isn't really a 65 pound gaming PC anymore, but that's beyond the point. The specs are an Intel Core i7-3770, a Radeon RX 570 4GB graphics card, and I've actually found out the name of the motherboard. It's made by someone called HUM. I've never heard of them, but it is a B75 chipset motherboard, so it's not that bad. And the power supply is a CIT 450 watt, which is a very questionable power unit, but it's performed relatively fine so far there's been no issues with it so it's not that bad and a fresh install of windows 10 is installed as well it's only about a month old but i never use this system outside of testing so it's essentially brand new as always cinebench r23 is up first the single core performance sees a little boost up to 782 with 16 gigabytes of ram installed this should help out in gaming Maybe not by too much, but it is a welcome performance boost. Moving to the multi-core performance, and it's pretty much stayed the same if I'm honest, only boosting slightly to 3690 with 16GB of RAM installed. This is fairly expected if I'm honest, I don't think Cinebench is memory intensive at all, so yeah, this is pretty much within line of what I was expecting. First up with the gaming benchmarks is GTA 5. I set it to the high preset with 2 times MSAA with the sliders on half. The average here was 78 FPS with a 1% low of 58 FPS. This was a healthy bump over 8 gigabytes installed. So GTA does benefit from a slight RAM improvement, albeit it isn't make or break. The same is true for Modern Warfare 2 where I set it to the basic preset with normal textures and FSR set to quality. We see a very minor bump in performance up to 94 FPS with 61 FPS for the 1% low. So Call of Duty does perform a bit better but this doesn't seem to be a CPU intensive game in multiplayer at least. So 8GB or 16GB of RAM you're going to be fine here. Fortnite on DirectX 12 with the medium preset and the low view distance, the average did go down slightly to 95 from 97, this isn't that big if I'm honest, it's within margin of error so it's not a big deal. But the 1% low was boosted quite substantially to 64 from 52. This is a lot smoother because them 1% lows I do believe they are more important than the average frame rate. Switching up to the performance API which is 
sort of like DirectX 11 with a lot of features turned off. Here I set it to low with high textures. It flipped here as the average went up, but the 1% low went down, but Fortnite is prone to stutter even with modern hardware, but I believe 16 gigabytes of RAM is a good investment for Fortnite. It just seems that DirectX 12 does utilize the extra 16 gigabytes of RAM over the eight gigabytes. F122 saw a very minor performance bump on the medium preset and it seems like F1 isn't a very CPU or memory intensive game at the medium preset. If you've got 8GB of RAM you should be fine playing F1, there's no problems here on the medium preset with this hardware config. Cyberpunk, just like I expected, did go up ever so slightly with 16GB. Here I set it to the low preset with high textures and FSR was set to quality so the RX 570 did have a fighting chance here. This saw a slight performance boost with that average going up to 53 and the 1% low going up to 38. This is slightly better performance and it's welcome but it's not make or break by any means. Thanks to upgrading to 16GB of RAM, this allowed me to dedicate 8GB of RAM to Minecraft compared to the 4GB I had dedicated to it previously. Here I played with the Optifine mod installed which I recommend for any hardware configuration. I set the render distance to 12 chunks with the simulation distance at 8 chunks and I set it to the fancy preset as well. Performance went up by a bit increasing the 1% low and the averages by a relatively decent margin and the extra 8GB of RAM should work out pretty well especially in the late game with Minecraft as you're loading in different dimensions and stuff like that and you've got massive bases going on. Here is where the 8 gigabytes of dedicated RAM to Minecraft makes a big difference. 16 gigabytes of RAM is not essential for Minecraft, but it's nice to have. Last game up today is Rainbow Six Siege. Here I set it to the low and performance went up slightly with both averages and 1% lows improving by a tiny amount. But we're looking at single digit improvements here from 193 up to 200 FPS on average and 125 FPS for the 1% low going up to 127. So it's not massive here, but I'm not surprised as Rainbow Six Siege recommends eight gigabytes of RAM. Looking at the 8 game average taken from the average frame rate and 1% lows for every game, we see about a 7% performance increase for both the average frame rates and 1% lows. This is a fairly minor performance increase overall if I'm honest, it's not a make or break thing. Some games did benefit a lot more than others so that's to be said, so yeah. So overall 16GB of RAM does provide a bit of a gaming performance boost over 8GB of RAM even on an older system like this. At around 7% gaming performance boost on average, which is nothing to shy at really, is not that substantial, but it's an extra 7% of gaming performance you wasn't getting before the 16 gigs of RAM. I did mainly benchmark all the games today, some of the most popular ones like Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite and even Minecraft were on here, they're not the most demanding games in the world. But if you were to play more newer games, like open world games like Hogwarts Legacy, stuff like that, you would probably see 8GB of RAM start to really struggle here. So is upgrading to 16GB of RAM worth it on an older system like this? And I would have to say, kind of, and not for gaming performance either. It's more down to OS degradation as you install applications and updates to your operating system. It will start to use more RAM in the future. Here, 8GB will start to be cutting it a bit short, but if you've got 16 gigabytes, you've got double the headroom and you'll be having a much better gaming experience in the future, I suspect. And also, as I've mentioned before, if you want to multitask as well, like watch YouTube while playing your game, 16 gigabytes for this is pretty much a must as we all know how much RAM Google Chrome uses. With a newer system, you might see different results, especially if you're playing newer games. This is why I'm going to make a follow-up video to this in the coming weeks where I'm going to be testing my Ryzen 5 5600G test bench system with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and also 32 gigabytes of RAM to see how games perform with varying sizes of memory. So is upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM on an older system like this worth it? And I would have to say yes, purely because an extra 8 gigabytes of RAM is literally worth 10 pounds here in the UK. It's worth nothing. And if you had two four gig sticks and you had no spare slots, you can spend 20 quid on 16 gigs of RAM, sell the other RAM as well to make back a bit of money, considering that you're gonna get some more headroom 
a bit more gaming performance and you gain some multitasking performance there too. So I think it makes a quick and easy upgrade for an old gaming PC like this. So with this being said, I'm going to leave the video here. If you like this one, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content and I'll catch you in the next one.